faults are a very important concept and in practice they're extremely relevant in all of geology and the many fields that fall below it for example structural geology stratigraphy rock mechanics mining exploration faults have very broad reaching impacts on all of these different fields so it's important for you to understand the basics of them what i hope to provide with this video is just an introduction to them and the three basic types of faults that can maybe act as a springboard into more complicated discussions. But just as an introduction, what is first a fault? Well, when we have some layer or multiple layers of rock in the Earth's crust, right, this could be a slice of anything, right? We're looking at it as a cross section. A fault is just going to be a plane that cuts at some angle that acts as a plane of relative motion between two sides within the same rock unit or two distinct rock units, right? And when I say relative motion, both of them could move. Uh, one of them could move simply relative to the other, right? We could say maybe this, this bottom plate here doesn't necessarily have to move, but it's going to be some basically failure zone that you're going to see sliding along of these rock layers. And so, of course, this is usually re the result of huge amounts of stress. Right, and you'll know stress can occur at things like mountain building events, right? Huge amounts of crust being pushed together. It could be along shear boundaries, right? Like the San Andreas Fault, kind of grinding against each other. And then finally, you could have things like a, a divergent plate boundary, rifting apart and putting rock into tension. So that's what they are. Now let's get into three basic types of faults here. And the first one that we're going to introduce is the normal fault. First, we have normal. And normal, oh, that sounds kind of nice, right? It's normal, nothing abnormal about it, right? Well, the name normal is, I think, kind of just a vestige of the original naming scheme because it was maybe what people first looked at when the first practical application of faulting was, was within the mining industry. So it was named accordingly from people who are underground working in these things but let's say that you've got similar to the last picture two kind of distinct blocks we'll put a fault plane here and then draw the other one okay so a normal fault basically means that when we have the slipping along this plane first let me draw some axes here the actual motion is going to occur in the x and y directions right again we're looking at this in cross section and i've defined the axes as such just to explain this now when we have this slip occur the lower plate here right the one that is going to have i'll explain it this way and then i'll explain it kind of in a simpler way the one that has an acute angle at the toe here and an obtuse angle at the top that plate is going to move up and then, of course, relatively, that means that this plate here is moving down, or this block. I'll explain them in more clarifying terms in just a second here. To kind of simplify this, we have two kind of distinct terms for these two blocks. And these come, again, from kind of antiquated mining terminology. But they're still used to this day all over the place. So, you know, I'm not even going to say that it's, oh, it's just an important thing to know. No, you definitely should should understand these so to introduce this think of it back in the day so a lot of times what you'd have would be a gold vein right that infills along a fault you know in addition to being areas where you may have voids and there's a lot of stress faults are of course great pathways for water and hydrothermal fluids to travel and of course if you know anything about how metals get deposited in the earth's crust a lot of times what we see is that these hydrothermal fluids will find one of these faults and then deposit mineralized zones within them. So we would be mining in the old days along these, these veins of gold, for example, in the mountain. And so we'd be looking at it the same way in cross section. Here's our little stick figure miner, right, with weird legs. And basically the names come from that. This block here would be solid rock and this is at the miner's foot so they called it the foot mall 
and then this block here hangs above the miner's head or specifically I think the actual reason was because they would hang their lanterns before the days of uh, kind of modern nice headlamp technology they would hang their lantern up on this wall in order to to illuminate their work area so they called this the hanging wall and those terms again they're they sound very kind of old school but they're still used to this day so that's what we use so in the normal fault to use these term these terms that we just discussed now the foot wall moves up so again this is the foot wall and it goes up in this normal fault and this is the hanging wall and it goes down foot wall up hanging wall down that's really what you need to remember so that's that's an introduction to the first type there. Now let's jump over, give ourselves a little bit of space, and we'll introduce the second type, which will be a little bit quicker here because it's really just the opposite of the normal fault, and we call it a reverse fault. Oh, okay, so reverse relative to what? Relative to a normal fault. Again, I didn't make the names. You might think of them as kind of silly. But if we draw this same picture again, block here, block here, then, well, if the normal fault sees the foot wall going up and the hanging wall going down, well, again, looking at our picture, this is the foot wall, this is the hanging wall. This time, the hanging wall is going to move up and the foot wall is going to move down. And that's it, right? We'll discuss a little bit more about the implications of this either at the end of this video or I may just push it off to a separate video entirely. But the third type of fault here after that is going to be a little bit more interesting. It's a strike slip fault. And these two broadly, normal and reverse, you could think of them as a broader term for them would be dip slip faults. So if I can give myself just a little more space here, I'll draw this umbrella term on here. And the reason for that it goes back to if you look at the way the picture is drawn, remember strike and dip. Hopefully you're familiar with these terms. The dip of the fault goes in this direction, right along the plane that the angle is on. The strike, by contrast, is going into the page. So these faults, the motion is occurring along the dip direction is the way of thinking about it. The dip direction is somewhere within this XY plane and the slipping is occurring within that direction. In strike slip, by contrast, you've probably, woo, you've probably figured it out by now. The motion is entirely within the strike direction. So this is going to be a little more fun to draw here. Let's see if I can, what's the best way of doing this? We have a block here, a little bit of 3D action going on. And then another block here, draw that out, comes down, meets there, bring them down. Something like that. And then there is motion along the direction of strike. So if we draw our axes here, all of a sudden, oh, now we're three-dimensional, so we'll include Z. X and Y will be the same, but now we have the addition of a Z axis. And that z-axis is going to be along this strike here, right? That's the strike of the fault. Again, the fault itself is still located along this plane between these two blocks. But now all of a sudden, the motion that we're experiencing is going to be along the strike of it, right? That z-axis is where the motion actually occurs. And this is, of course, usually associated with shearing stresses. Sliding along, right? If we're looking at the surface, looking top down, then these are shearing stresses, right? By contrast, the reverse fault is usually the result of compression. So again, things like mountain building, things being forced together, maybe a subduction zone, compression, and then the we can erase this mining picture now. 
and then the normal fault is going to be the result of tension. And again, that would be broadly speaking at things like rifting centers, divergent plate boundaries. So tension, compression, and shear, different types of stress being applied. And then finally, to end this, I'll just go over kind of my favorite way of, I'm going to go over my favorite way of remembering these, which I learned a while back. And hopefully it'll be useful for you as well. When we talk about the difference between normal and reverse, kind of the quick way I used or originally used, I guess I've moved a little bit beyond it now, is two acronyms. Normal faults are FUN. That stands for foot wall up thrown. And again, up thrown, I'm not sure if that's a real word, but it's going to work for us. <laughs> because the foot wall moves up. You could just say foot wall up, right? I'm not sure if the up thrown piece is uh, necessary, but the foot wall moves up, then it's normal, right? And then look at compression. And this one, maybe if you're not from the United States, this one might not make as much sense, but we would say FDR, which for those of us who live in America is kind of easy to remember because of our uh, president. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, of course, went by FDR. So most of us, if you say FDR, that, that brings to mind something, and it's something kind of easy to remember. And, of course, this means footwall is downthrown or moves down relative to the hanging wall. Then that means it's a reverse fault. So kind of silly, but it's pretty easy to remember them, right? Strike slip, just... I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. It moves along the, the strike here. Yeah, look at that. I can pick it up and actually show the motion here. How cool is that? Nifty. But anyways, that's an overview of the faulting types. I'm going to go a little more in detail on how I think about tension, compression, and shearing in a <clears throat> excuse me follow-up video. But as a basic introduction, I think that'll just about do it for now. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you later.